Hey guys, it's Isa and Angelie. <laughs> I'm going to be filming a video all about my riding story. We've been requested to do this video a lot and Julie and I felt it would be better if we did two separate videos because while she's talking, I would just be like sitting there and then vice versa. I'm just going to tell you guys my whole, I mean I'm not going to go into too many details, but just like my whole experience as a rider and where it started, everything to where I am now. And I hope you guys find this entertaining, insightful. Hope you guys are enlightened by my story. It's nothing too wild, but I definitely, you know, everyone has their own story and I love to tell mine. Also, uh, if you guys watch our latest vlog, I was sick for like a week. That's why I sound a little bit raspy. So let's just start. I started riding when I was four. Um, my mom growing up, she always wanted to ride but never was able to. And so when my brother and I came around, she was like, let's start riding. It was my mom, brother, and I who all started riding. We had a horse named Picasso. Picasso was my mom's horse. And then I had a little pony, Welsh pony. And he was 12 hands. And his name was Van Gogh. And he was my brother's pony. But then he phased out of it. And, and this pony became mine for actually quite a while, like seven years. Before we had those two horses, I rode some lesson horses for a little bit, but I barely remember that. I had this pony and I was in pony club. Well, I still am. I joined pony club when I was six and I would ride at my house. Mom and dad completely, I live in the middle of nowhere and my parents, they like built like a whole farm. They, we had two pastures the like normal pasture where like I would ride and also we'd keep our horses and then this other summer pasture that had more grass and we would like bring them there in the summer during the day so they can get more grass and then we have a barn but it's more like a storage barn we didn't have any like stalls or anything like that we kept our two horses there and I would just ride at home and my mom would teach me and then I had some trainers here and there I don't even remember their names but mainly my mom taught me everything which is weird because she started when I started but we kind of just did the thing together and my mom was very smart and she like read all these books and was just completely submerged in it so she was able to teach me everything that she learned. I would just ride at home like we didn't have an arena it was just well we made like our own dressage arena with like PVC pipes and we bought like uh trash bins and then put like dressage letters on them. <laughs> we got some jumps from a friend and we just worked with those. Oh, so Lauren and Sarah came over. Just like, don't we have <laughs> Yes, hey! <laughs> They're gonna watch me film Hi, the rest of this video. I would just like spend all my time at home with my horses and I would be like, my whole childhood is just like picking up horse crap and like it was so much work maintaining it so I definitely like learned a lot of responsibility when I kept my horses at home. I would always do camps and shows downstate with Pony Club because they would have a bunch of trainers that I could train with and like teach me more than that my mom could. I'm not sure if this is all chronologically perfectly accurate but then at some point my mom and I boarded Van Gogh, my pony, um, at this bar that was super close and they had an indoor arena but they didn't have a trainer so I would just ride there and I loved it and I was like progressing. But Van Gogh, he was a Welsh pony and he was kind of crazy like he was my first pony and I knew nothing like honestly if I were him I would have like killed me because I just like pulled on his face and it was a mess. He had a lot of energy and he would try to like buck me off and I had quite a few bad experiences. I went to this show and I was so pumped that I got over five jumps out of like 10 because he would refuse every single jump and he peed in the middle of the course. I almost fell off twice during the course. I forgot my course and had to like yell out into the audience like what's the next jump? And it was a pick your own line course so I literally couldn't jump anything. It was just a mess like that was literally me back then and like still me to this day sometimes. I sold this pony because like he was, he was like 12 hands and I was growing and I needed something different and so I got this horse named Kahlo and she was a quarter horse but she, she was built pretty athletically so I was able to jump her and she was very calm like she taught me a lot like she brought my confidence back up because she was calm and very kind of slow so like I had a lot of issues with like I need more energy. I got my C1 rating on her like with Pony Club 
and she was a really good, really good horse. Um, and then <laughs> when I had her, like in sixth grade, I would where I ride now, I would go over there for some lessons. I don't even know how I discovered this trainer, my trainer currently, but like I would take some lessons there, but I didn't board there, I would just like trailer there. And I remember one spring break, I didn't travel anywhere and I would, I stayed at my trainer's place for like the whole spring break and like did a ton of lessons. After that, I progressively started boarding at hers, at my trainer's place and that just begun. I would I would bring my horse Kahlo back home in the summer just because like I didn't need an indoor and it was cheaper. Max was like 2'6 because that was what my rating height was. Um, and so I got a different horse. I leased a horse named Percy and he was a thoroughbred and he actually kind of looked like Zara, like a man manly version of Zara. He was a really good horse, very well trained. He had a lot of experience on him. I went to um, Lexington, Kentucky with him and went to championships for show jumping and that was really fun. There was this terrible accident that happened with him. He like cut open um, like the front of all like his legs and it was just terrible and it was it became like proud flesh and it just wouldn't heal and the, my lease was ending as well so I had to return him and it was just a really bad situation. But there were a bunch of different phases where I was like gonna like lease this one horse and then he like got lame so I wasn't even gonna lease him and like all this stuff. At this point I was frequently or I was consistently boring at my trainers and full time like I met Julie there and like I had established like the barn life, I don't know what to call it. My trainer had heard of this horse named Lady, okay? <laughs> I always forget, so Zara's old name was Lady, which is, I'm sorry if that's what your horse's name is, but I think it's really it? gaudy. Her show name is Green Eyed Lady, like that was her jockey club name <laughs> which she used to race, which is literally like the devil. Like you might as well just call her like 666 Devil's freaking horse, I don't know. <laughs> I went to go try out Zara, and I just fell in love with her. I was just like, holy crap. Like I remember driving home because I like drove down to get her or to try her out, but I wasn't gonna pick her up the same day because I like had to talk to my dad and stuff and I was like, dad, like, please let me get this horse. Like this horse is amazing. Like I just fell in love with her. I was just like, girl, I connected with you. So my dad said yes. And we got Zara the next weekend. And this was May. 2016. First summer I had her. I did a bunch of clinics and camps just to like get to know her better. Next summer I did a bunch of shows. Was that last summer? Yeah, that was last summer. But last October, October 2016, Zara cuts open her stifle in the fence, like at our barn. And it was catastrophic, it was disgusting. I There was like a tube in her leg, I had to like flush her edema and like, it was a mess. And she had like, these stitches, and I had to cut them. Oh, it was so gross, it was not fun. She was a wreck because Zara's a thoroughbred, okay? She needs to get worked frequently. And if she is not worked frequently, she goes crazy. I mean, I'm just gonna be blatantly honest, I mean, hot-blooded horses need to be exercised regularly or else, I mean, that's just how they are. She was in stall rest for a ton of months, yeah, and that really sucked and she just was going crazy, as one would do. In, like, January, she was, I could start, like, walking her, like, on her, and honestly, if you guys watch, like, the video about, um, like, how to be confident when you're riding, yeah. I think that was on the video. It's a good video, you should check it out. But um, I like talked about how I had like had some really bad experiences. Like she was just crazy and like I would be like crying while I was riding her, but I was like, I need to exercise this horse. And it was just like really scary and I I like worked through it though. I don't know how honestly, but I got to the point where she was a normal horse again, like normal Zara, like how she was before she was injured. Like that whole summer I just worked so hard to get her back. To fitness and me back to fitness and just working her consistently and ever since then it's been only uphill and I've been able to work her super hard and it's so great like she is literally 
not a different horse she's how she was when I got her but she's just like so relaxed now and it's great I feel like every winter I've always digressed in my riding because you know I mean the where I live like it's really gets really cold there's really bad roads so there's always some reason that I can't go to the barn in the winter and I feel like I either not even plateau I always digress in the winter I always get worse I always just lose like my mojo and I feel like this winter I've actually been able to well one I've been more motivated and two I've been just able to go to the barn way more frequently than I ever have in the past and so I've been actually able to you know like ride like all the time and actually have jumping lessons and so I'm really pumped about that. I'm sure I missed a lot of things but those were all the horses I had. I had Van Gogh, then Kahlo, Percy, and now I have Zara. I'll just sum it up for you guys because I talk really fast. I had those horses and I used to keep horses at my house and like I had to take care of them and feed them like every day obviously um and then I started boarding at a place and then boarding at my now current barn and yeah so life is good. Riding has taught me a lot. I just wrote an essay actually about it for a scholarship. I would clearly not even close to be the same person if it wasn't for all the experiences that I've had whether they be good or bad and everyone starts out differently and everyone ends up in a different place. I hope you guys found this video insightful and interesting. You guys wanted to hear my story on how everything's been happening and yeah that was my story. I don't know if that's exciting. So I hope you guys like the video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!